I want to acknowledge, uh, first of all, thank you, Pastor Mark, for just blessing us. Can you love on Pastor Mark? Thank you for, for touching us with, uh, you know, you can never judge people. I, I wouldn't have known that kind of sound could come out of him. Um, that's why you, you, you just got to be open, man. And um, he has just an amazing gift and an amazing heart, and not just him, but his, his wife, Danielle, and his two daughters who have been also with us, Bryn and Lena. Um, we're just so grateful for the gift of friendship and brotherhood, and, um, and it's not just where I'm concerned. When you get to see them, please bless them, especially for this last week of giving us words from the heart of the Father last Sunday, and then they joined us on our Wednesday Zoom, Unpacking the Point. Um, it was just a, a real rich time of understanding identity, and we're going to be in that again today, understanding identity. Um, there are things that have to happen with us, have to happen uh, to us, in us, so that God can take us to the new spheres that he wants us to be in. Uh, just a, a little plug for uh, unpacking the point we get together on Wednesdays, and it's just a real beautiful atmosphere that God has helped us to create, not me. Uh, I've got wonderful leaders and admin uh, that create that environment, but the best of the environment that's created um, comes when you all log on and when you all jump in. And so I, I just want to challenge all of you, please, 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 unpacking the point um, the design is that we unpack more of what is uh, talked about on Sunday, but there's also some other things that we get to get in. And this coming week is just going to be really off the rails. It's going to be very, very different. And so I invite you to, uh, to jump on. Atmosphere is still going to be great, very comfortable. Anybody can jump on. Um, your presence is so needed um, because you encourage each other as well as those who lead that session but um, it's also a good jolt for the middle of the week after you've started interacting in your daily activities after Sunday. And sometimes things can get challenging and trying, and we would love to have you jump on. And it's for all ages, seniors, adults, married, unmarried, men, women. We have some amazing teenagers and preteens that come with the heart of the Father. And so as we're making sure that the generation that we're in and the one that comes behind us does not forget how to recognize God and his power, his miracles. Um, we want to make sure everyone is included. So please, please jump on. It's a safe environment to learn and grow and, um, and do the work ahead of time. In other words, unless you're working or unless you have something where you can't show your face, do the work ahead of time. Set Wednesday so you can show your face. And, and the face isn't, isn't for anything to embarrass you or anything. It's just to let others know that they're not alone. They're not alone. In fact, look around and see the beauty of God's creation. Just look around. So many different shapes and sizes and colors and, and personalities and hairstyles, 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 hairstyles. So uh, jump on that. It's going to be very new this time around um, because uh, Pastor Ernest has been working on something and it's really, it's really going to, it's going to bless you. I'll be there and I'm excited about how this new, uh, this new phase, at least um, for this season, uh, God's given us something pretty cool. Um, I want to, I want to talk about this identity deal because there are things that God wants to do with us and in us. And there are times when he wants to broaden us and expand us and stretch us. So I want to show you a little story in the Old Testament. And I don't know if you've read this before, but sometimes you'll see a passage in Scripture and it just stands out. There's nothing in front of it. There's nothing behind it. It's just this little moment and I believe that there are lessons that we can learn from this particular encounter. And again, you may have seen it before, especially if you've read through the Bible. Um, but it's also possible that you missed it. And so we want to extract some truths this morning as it relates to identity. And I really pray that your heart is just so open 
to hear what the Father wants to say. Just be open. So appreciative of, of the worship team and every time I get a chance to celebrate our children, um, my son Ryan was leading this morning and oh, my father, I'm so blessed. Pam and I both are with our sons and our daughters and our granddaughter, but you know, Ryan filled me this morning. It's nothing like your children being able to lead you into the presence of the Lord. You're my heart, man, and I love you. He calls me Papa. They all do. They call me Papa. So um, go, to, uh, go to the book of uh, 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. 2 Kings chapter 6, chapter 6. And, and let's look at this little thought that comes. And again, um, let's let our hearts be open. Let's, uh, let's repeat what, uh, what, I heard, uh, what I heard first, my, uh, a guy that I watched from a distance, and then his son took over. Uh, John, John Osteen, back in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the 80s, late 70s and the 80s, I used to, I used to watch him on Channel 29. <laughs> and, um, and he'd say these things and just go with me, you know it. You've heard it before, and his son continues with it. You know, hold your, hold your Bible or your tablet representing your Bible or your phone, <laughs> you know. Just hold it up high and say, this is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. My mind is alert. My spirit is active. I will receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never, ever be the same again. And bring some scripture in there. Therefore, I commend to God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build me up and give me an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is my confession. Look at somebody and say, that's good. That's good, that's good. Uh, many times we wait until the end of a service to include people who uh, may not have a relationship with God. Uh, every now and then I like to break tradition. I, careful when I say this. Um, it's in context. I hate tradition. <laughs> it's in context. Um, and so I'm always looking for different moments, and the Holy Spirit helps me. And one of the things that he shared with me early, early this morning was to, to invite people in at the beginning of our time together. And so whether you're here or if you're watching online, from wherever you may be, We invite you in to this moment. I mean, on Sundays, most of the people that get together are Christians. But we also understand that there are times when people might just walk into the building or, or stop by online, or maybe they're invited. And I want you to know that the family of God is just so broad, and his love is so broad. So even with what we sing today and talk about today and what we read in Scripture today, I pray that it touches you because you're welcome. This is a safe place to hear the Father's love. And that's really what our times together is all about, whether we meet here or whether there's someone that meets you on the job or in community or even at a ball game. Our goal is to be like Jesus everywhere he went. He was always walking around. He was always moving from place to place. And he was offering the Father's love. So at this moment, anyone who doesn't know Jesus, anyone who's never had a loving encounter with Jesus, 
Because he didn't come to point an accusing finger. He didn't come to isolate and point out all of your defects. He came to make things right. And that, that means however you are wired, he wants to reach you there. And there is a romance that comes from seeing him, seeing who he is. But I also want you to know he's, uh, he's not just a loving guy. <laughs> no, he's also a king. He's a hero. He, he adds the super and the supernatural to his hero status. And so, uh, whatever bubbles up in you during our time together today, online, here in the audience, just be open to his love. Be open to his strength, his power, his wisdom, and the miracles that he wants to perform in your life. And for those of you that may feel disconnected and you've been a Christian, well, I tell you, this, this pandemic and some of the things that have happened in our world these past couple years has caused us to miss certain things and maybe even lose certain things. Now, don't let a whisper of guilt and shame come in off of that statement. May it be an invitation into what he wants to do to you and with you today. So I invite again your heart, all of your hearts, even those of you who have been living for God and enjoying great relationship with him, he wants to do something through this teaching in your life today as well. Bow your heads just for a moment. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. Jesus is our shepherd. He takes care of us. Holy Spirit, you are that shepherding spirit. You are the one that practically here on earth leads us and guides us into all truth. So open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and we offer wills to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Second Kings chapter 6. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And I will ask you this ahead of time to take some notes. Let your heart be dialed in, but take some notes. And during the week, go back and listen to it again. Look at it again. And the Holy Spirit will give you more. I say that because I know how important that can be. Part of my growth and development and hearing God's voice and growing in different phases, even experiencing different levels of conversion. I got born again when I was 11, but man, I experienced so many moments of conversion where I jumped, I, I moved up. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 puts it this way. He says, we go from one level of glory to another level of glory. And it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And so I say this to those that I lead many times. Give the Holy Spirit something to work with. So if something bubbles up off of something that is said or read today, make a little note of it. And like Pam and I used to do when we were those young 20-year-olds, the pastor would teach Back then, we didn't have electronic stuff. It was just, you know, bonded leather and pages. But we had those highlighters, man. And whenever something would come up, we'd take that pen and we'd outline the scripture, get that highlighter, pink, blue, fluorescent yellow. <laughs> and um, so that later on, maybe on lunch on Tuesday or Monday, or maybe in the morning when we got up to start our day, the Holy Spirit could bring something else out of it that would help us grow and, and evolve. So I encourage you to take some notes in here this morning. Look at starting at verse 1 in 2 Kings chapter 6. It says, one day the group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, 
you can see the place where we meet with you is too small. Let us go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs and there we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, Elijah told them, go ahead. They said, please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them, and when they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface. Grab it, Elisha said. And the man reached out and grabbed it. So I want to spend some time just unpacking a little bit of this as we, as we look at what God wants to do with our identity. So we're going to talk about the accent. In fact, in your, in your Bible, maybe you have one of those Bibles that it, it sections and it gives titles to the section that you're going to read. And this particular section, I think in the New Living Translation at least, it calls it the floating axe head. Is there nothing else that has to do with it? Just this small text that was meant to bring out and bring about meaning. It says, one day a group of the prophets came to Elisha and told him, as you can see, the place where we meet with you is too small. And so one of the first things you want to get out of this is how God wants to expand you. Sometimes we come into a relationship with the Father or we even come into a season and God says, there's more that I have for you. And I will tell you, that's ongoing. It doesn't matter who you are or how old you are, what, what place you are in society, financially, educationally, vocationally, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are in your family. There are times where God is always looking for ways to expand you. All the time. And you're in a season right now, and I will tell you, you're in a season right now where God wants to do more with you. And that's not just to pump you up and say God wants to give you more money or God wants to promote you and give you another job or, or it's time to have a baby or here's some resources, new car, new house. I, that may happen, but let that be on the side. Right now, God wants to take you and your identity into another place. And primarily, it is because of influence. Expansion is always for influence. Yesterday, I had the, the privilege and the honor, and I, I, can't, I can't count how many times I've had this honor, to stand back about here on the stage and marry this couple where two became one. For this particular couple, the, the wife is my niece. And so there was joy that came up in my heart. But I watched them as they went through their ceremony. And not everyone has to have this. There are some who have simple ceremonies. There are some who have huge ceremonies. And I've, again, had the privilege of being involved in a lot of them. But as I stood there and I watched them go through the different parts of their ceremony, and one part in particular involved feet washing. And the two of them walked over and sat on a bench. And one at a time, they removed the other's shoes. They had a small bowl of water, and they began to wash feet. I thought that was so beautiful. 
It spoke of sacrifice. It spoke of laying down your agenda and helping with the agenda of the other, even, even if it involved something that you may have not been comfortable with. But we first see this with Jesus. Jesus was the one that first washed his disciples. In fact, he even washed the one who would betray him. He washed his feet as well. But as I watched these two go through the elements, the ceremony of marriage, I began to think how great it is that many have filled this auditorium to see them. It's always like that. We look at a marriage or anyone who is experiencing expansion, promotion, leveling up, and we're happy for them. But at that moment in their mind, and as we spoke later at the reception, their goal is to influence others. Thank God for what he has given you. But the goal is always others. That's a good thing to write down, <laughs> others. Even if you just write that word, you can put down everything that was said, but, but at least have that word in it. Because no matter what God wants to do for you, in you, on you, it's always for him to work through you. So please understand that your relationship with God is wonderful and it's great that this amazing creator of all life would create you and create you again. I'm glad for both of my births. The first one born to George in Georgia, but man, at 11, I got born again. And I'm so grateful that I can call God my father. But I have come to see, and I'm continuing to come to see, that it's not just about me. This place is too small. Will you whisper that to yourself? Will you say, this place is too small? Where I'm at is just it's too small. God has done too much for me. It's too small. There are more who need to be around me, not for me, but for him. This place is too small. The gifts that I've received, this place is too small. The revelation that I have received, this place is too small. It's time to expand. My family, it's, it's too small. It's time to expand. I've said over and over again about this great opportunity that I have and Pam puts it this way. She says, you know, you collect people. And that's right. I collect, I've been collecting people. I'm going to collect some people today. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I pray you have that mindset. That's what Jesus did. He's collecting people. He's collecting people. In fact, he went to his own, and his own didn't receive him. And so then he says, to who as many as would receive him, he gave. Places too small. Collect some people. Collect them. Collect them in community. It doesn't mean you have to give them your credit card number and your social security and your driver's license. It, it doesn't mean. Because many times, especially in our society today, we put walls up. We're like, ah, uh, this far, no, no more. Can't let you in too close. But the Holy Spirit will show you, if you're open, how to expand yourself. These prophets came to Elisha, this holy man, this holy man. And he said, as you can see, this place where we meet, it's too small. So at the end of the day, this whole short passage is about expansion. It's about expansion. But there are things must, that must be done in order to expand well. 
Look at verse two. Verse two says, let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place. He says, okay. This holy man said to them, go ahead. But they said, please come with us. And I just wanna, I wanna invite all of you to have that part of your diet. Please invite other people in your life that are bigger than you. All kinds of people. But make sure within that group that there are some holy people. I'm not talking about holiness in terms of people who just hold their Bibles and they walk a certain way. They even talk, you know, about God, you know, a certain way. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who can touch heaven. People who have the heart of the Father that love you, that love you. When I journal my conversation with God, I always make sure I've got some people that can judge it. Not to judge the actual words of what to do, but the spirit of it. Does this sound like God? Do you think God would be saying these things to me? Is it in his resume? Is it in his character? Is it in his DNA? Make sure that the people who are bigger than you that represent God sound like God. That's why I'm always trying to give you Jesus' character traits. And you can find it all through scripture. Man, the Holy Spirit is the one who says, only what Jesus says. And what does he do? This is how he sounds. He encourages, he builds up, edifies, and he comforts. So no matter what he has to say, it's going to involve those three traits. It's going to come like that. Even if he has to challenge you. Even if he has to challenge you. In Revelations, he's talking, Jesus is, to one of the churches, and it's being journaled and recorded because John was there. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This is the beginning of the book of Revelations, and then he began to write. He ended up writing 20 chapters. That's a message in there. Don't get excited just about the first word that God gives you. Keep on writing. There's more that he wants to say to you. But when Jesus started talking to this group, who really he had an issue with, he built them up first. He says, I love this about you. I love that about you. But this other thing we've got to work on. And so make sure when you have these big people in your life, people who love you, people who are bigger than you, and people who themselves are following God. That's my standard for those who are in my life, who I trust with my journaling. Not people who want to compete with me. Not people who want to lord over me. Not people who don't really care about me. And you'll find them. And I'm always open to those individuals getting closer to God and loving God and and growing and evolving in God. But man, when it comes to people speaking into me where I open it up for growth and development, I make sure that I have people who are walking the same way. People who are bigger and people who actually love me. And so they said, we realize their expansion is needed. Will you come with us? We want to invite you because you are holy. You are bigger. You hear from God. You yourself listen to God, and you care about us. Will you you come? He said... He said, okay, I'll come, verse three. Okay, verse four. So when, so he went with them, and when they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. In other words, we're starting to clear some things out. And that's what happens when God puts you in certain spheres, whether it's your family, your community, your job, the city, the region, even the nation. I mean, we have all of that gloriously here in our congregation. 
We have people who are in community, people who are just in family. We have people who are touching our city. We have people who are touching this East Coast region. We have people who are touching all of our nation. And because of the universities in this place where we sit as a congregation or as a building, we get people from all over the world. And so when you begin to talk about expansion, it's got to be right where you are, but then it's got to be very broad. And may God help us to be broad. For God so loved the world. You'll hear in a few weeks two young ladies who are from South Africa. And while they're here in our congregation and have been in our congregation for a while, their heart is always back home in Cape Town. Their heart is always, how can life and light that we've learned here be there? The place is too small. God wants to expand me. And if it's your family, please let God expand your family. May he expand your influence in your family. Don't shy back. Don't miss opportunities because the Father is in you. Don't think that certain family members are too far gone. Don't think that too many community residents are too far gone or those that you work with or around that they're too far gone. I'm talking about identity. And when God expands you, this is what you need to know about you. Who am I? Who am I? What's my why? Is what Pastor Mark was sharing on Wednesday night. Who am I? And what do I do and what don't I do? Watch that Zoom recording. It's really, really powerful. And when you begin to see that God loves me and he's not just for me, like Isaiah 6, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And, and after he spoke with him, the Trinity said, who will go for us? Who will go for us? So that's the expansion. That's the expansion. May I say to the junior high students and the high school students and the college age students, please don't look at some of your peers and think that they're too bad, they're too off, they're too rebellious. I believe that just like adults can reach adults, children can reach children. And so with the right kinds of leadership in our lives, which is why we have parents, praise God for parents who hear from God that can equip their children when they go out to school. Not just to get a good education, but to carry influence. So when that happens, the vegetation needs, if we're gonna stay with the text, the vegetation needs to be cut out around. That's what the ax is for. And the ax is important. It clears things out, but it also represents where we are. Because as you begin to, to allow the, the heart of the Father, whether it's people or whether it's situations, decisions, or transformation that can happen in our city, in our, our region, our nation, in our world, starting with our family, some things are going to need to get cut out. And God uses us to clear it out. He uses us to clear it out. But when they started to cut, look at verse 5. As one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Hmm. Why would the axe head fall off of the axe handle? Because it's not sharp. Because it's dull. It's, it's got a blunt edge. 
And so the suggestion is make sure your ax is sharp. Make sure it's sharp. And there are things that can, that can keep our ax head from being sharp. Look what happened. They started moving and it only happened when expansion took place, right? If, if expansion never took place, if they never got beyond themselves, you would have never known that there was a dullness there. So you can be very comfortable where you are, financially, educationally, vocationally, spiritually, wherever you are that God has you, you can be very comfortable. Be real comfortable. Whenever God says, I want you to expand, it's going to reveal the sharpness. It's going to reveal the cutting edge. Man, I really, I mean, I was a Christian. I, was, I told you my history in being born again, conversions. But man, when I got married, whew, I started to see who I really was. You start to expand beyond yourself. You'll start to see who you really are. And then we thought I had plateaued and reached a certain place and I was comfortable and I was good. And then God gave us children. Children will always locate you. But that's the same thing for people. People will locate you. You get into a new job, you pray for a job. I can't tell you how many years and individuals that I agreed in prayer with at the altar. Pastor, I want a job. Pastor, a job has come up. Pray in agreement that I have influence in this interview, that I have influence in this new position that I've taken. And then boom, they get it. Not because of me, but because they invited God in. But I've seen many times that after something like that has happened, they're back at the altar. <laughs> oh God, it has to help me. You gotta get me out of this job. These people, these people. So whenever God expands you and whenever he puts you around others and even other situations, it's going to reveal how sharp the ax head is. But what happened? They started cutting and one guy's head fell off and fell into the river. Look at what it says then. He says, oh, sir, he cried, it was a borrowed ax. It was borrowed. And I will tell you, you can repeat messages. You can borrow someone else's teachings. You can borrow someone else's giftings. You can even borrow someone else's song. But that anointing to teach or to preach or to sing, that anointing on there to set people free, it was forged in the quiet. It was forged in those moments where their ax was being sharpened and sharpened and sharpened. And that's not to suggest, don't be around people who inspire you. That's not to suggest, don't allow the teaching. I mean, for years I've said, if I'm teaching something, get it to the degree where you can teach it. But you've got to make it your own. You can't just repeat it because somebody else repeated it. And God forbid we should sing songs trying to imitate the voice. Because we all can't sing like somebody else, right? Right? Even though we try. It's got to be more than mimic. I love Eli and Samuel. Eli is this prophet and he's grooming this young guy, Samuel, because his mom put him in that position, in that environment. Parents, put your children in environments where they can learn more than how to swim. 
They can learn more than how to play tennis. They can learn more than how to play football and basketball and piano. And I think it's amazing that we have gifts, that we're growing. But please put your children around those who can hear from God. Please put your children in an environment where they get prepared for the day where God shows up and wants to talk to them by himself. All this time, God has grown and developed Eli and how Hannah, Samuel's mother, said, I'm going to put my son around someone who hears from God because of what God has done for me. He has given me a son, and now I want to give that son back to God. And so Eli is walking with Samuel and they're doing their chores, they're doing their duties day in and day out, but it's done in an environment of hearing God's voice. And one day they were sleeping and Eli's in one room and Samuel's in another room. And Samuel hears a voice, Samuel, Sam. And because of relationship, Samuel jumps up and runs to Eli. He says, Eli, you called me. He says, no, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. And he does, and he hears the voice again. And it's God who's calling. Samuel, Samuel. He gets up. Eli, surely you called me. I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. The third time he comes in, and when he says it, Eli says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The next time you hear that voice, say, speak, Lord. And I'm bringing in just an expansion of the teaching because Eli knows how God does things. And I see him saying within himself, wait a minute, this sounds like God. I hear a bit. <laughs> this sounds familiar. The next time he says it, just say, speak, Lord. Speak. What's happening here? It's going from Eli's teaching, from what he's learned in God, to now Samuel gets to hear it all by himself. And that's why I suggest, if you've got things that you've grown in and you've learned in, even educationally, beyond just Christianity, in terms of hearing biblical teachings or hearing spiritual songs and hymns and spiritual songs, as it says in the, in the, in the Scripture in the New Testament, make sure that even in what you get at Penn and what you get at Drexel, what you get at Temple, what you get at Villanova, St. Joe's, what you get at School of the Sciences or Moore College of Art, Philadelphia College of Art. I'm just talking about the universities that are around. Or even some of the things that you get from your parents. At some point, make it your own. Make it your own. When we were little, and uh, something happened in the house, and so my dad would line all five of us up, starting from the oldest down to me, Gretchen, George, Sabrina, Adrian, and me. And so something happened, I don't know, maybe it was cleaning or something that got done, something got lost, whatever it is. He talked to us. And always at the end, he'd use it as a teachable moment and he'd say, take care of each other. Because when you get older, you're going to need each other. A couple of weeks ago, my, my, uh, my dad's youngest brother, the last of all, all of them, he passed. So we're looking through pictures and talking and it's gendering conversations. And now here are me and my brothers and my sisters, we're all together. And that phrase comes up. Love each other. Stay close to each other. Because when you get older, you're going to need each other. I've heard it over and over and over and over from my dad, over and over. So now that we have our children, I have made his words my own. And they come out with my flavor. So as I talk to Ryan and Andrew and Jordan and Amanda and, and Emily, I, I say these same words, but they're now mine. I'm not just mimicking. I'm not just repeating what dad said. 
they're making it their own because I see their closeness. Been telling Ryan, Andrew, and Jordan since they were little. And now, last night, there we were after the wedding and we're talking and it's like, man, I'm so glad you guys are close. Pam and I were looking across the table at them and they're just laughing, kicking it up and doing their thing. And she leans into me and says, oh, I love these guys. It started with historically parents and grandparents and great-great-parents, and it comes down to us, and at some point, we adopt it, and we make it our own. Be careful, though, trying to just take something from someone and it working without you putting in the time. Take the time to make it your own. All kinds of things need to happen when God is expanding us, the beauty is we are all very diverse. I asked you to look around earlier and you see just the diversity, just the creativity, the mind and how God has made it so complex among all of us. We don't all think the same way. We don't all talk the same way. That's why it's important when we come together, all of those parts of the body need to be appreciated and valued. It's not just the ones that look good. It's not just the ones that sound good. It's not just the ones who are most seemingly intelligent. That's why it's important as you're raising children, raise them in the way they should go. As I know in my family, we're all very different. Even as we look at our siblings, we're all very, very different. And in here, we're all very, very different. So I want to challenge you. Get alone with the Lord. Allow that time for your heart to be fresh and open. Sharpen that cutting edge. That cutting edge. When does it get dull? When does it get dull? I mean, look at the next thing that he says. He says, he says it was borrowed. The end of verse 5. He says, it was borrowed. Verse 6 says, Elijah asked, when Elisha asked, where did it fall? Where did, where did it fall? This season that we've been in, man. Yeah, I'm on a campaign right now, starting with men, but expanding as far as it can go. Let's get back to God. Let's get back to God. And that's not to knock things that have happened in your life. That's really what this is about. God wants to expand you. One woman said, I've been crying out to God for him to heal me. And she heard the Lord say, why do you want me to heal you? He says, when I heal you, it's for a purpose. See, that's talking about it being too small. And so we're in a place right now where we're trying to get people excited about God today, energized about God today. We have taken a hit over these past couple years. And I will ask you, in the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of the racial issues and the political issues, some of your family issues, your financial issues, your own physical issues, when did your ax head fall off? When did it happen? When Peter denied Jesus in the garden, there he was, even though at the cross and the resurrection, Jesus said, go and tell Peter, I want to see him too. Yet inwardly, he was struggling. Inwardly. Have you ever done something that nobody knew anything about, or maybe people did know about it, and it just did something to the inside? Oh, you may be going through the motions. You may have even been borrowing sermons and songs. But you're not expanded the way that God wants to expand you. Because inside, it's like, ah, oh, man, if I wouldn't have said that thing, if I wouldn't have done that thing, if I wouldn't have made that decision. The prophet said, where did it fall? 
Peter talked to Jesus. And the environment that Jesus, uh, that Peter denied Jesus was by a flame. Pastor Ernest taught on this a few, a few months back. It was by a flame. There he was warming his hand by the fire. And he missed the mark. They said, you look like you belong with this Jesus. Jesus was across the way being tortured and questioned. Peter looked. He said, I don't know the man. Second time, I told you I don't know him. Third time, he got belligerent, started using profanity. I don't know him. Brokenness kicked in right there. The axe head fell right there. It's not as sharp. Jesus gets raised up from the dead, tells those two ladies, tell my disciples and Peter, meet me in Galilee. Peter ends up showing up with the group. They end up being back involved and around. But internally, something's missing. So what does Jesus do? Jesus takes Peter right back to the same spot where that dullness started to kick in, where he stopped being so sharp. And so he met him at a fire, and he asked him three questions. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. It went against, no, I don't know him. Second time, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. That second one, I don't know the man. The third time, he says, Peter, do you love me? And now Peter, with all kinds of emotion, shouts to Jesus, Lord, you know I love you. Why are you asking me this like this? Why are you going down this street? You know my heart. Is it okay? <laughs> now we are sharp again. We must get back to where that ax head fell. And we allow the Holy Spirit to take us back. Look at what happened. Look at what happened in verse 6. He says, where did it fall, the man of God asked. And when he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick. That stick is supposed to represent the cross. The cross will always fix it. The cross represents redemption. It represents reconciliation. It represents healing. It, it's, it's a wonderful place for a miracle. Miracle. When we allow the cross to show up in our darkest areas, when we stopped being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, when we, when we got disappointed and we allowed all kinds of things to come in. And I will tell you, yes, I know by the Spirit of God that these last two years have been hard on us. We slow down sometimes. This isn't pointing accusing finger. This is uncovering hurt. It's uncovering the dullness because he wants expansion and he wants to use you to do it. Your creativity, your wiring. We got to sharpen that head again. How do we get it? How do we get to the place where we recover? That stick, that cross. Look at what happened when the cross showed up. Elijah cut out a stick. I'm in the middle of verse six. I'll start from the beginning of verse six as we wrap this up. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. And when he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick, threw it into the water at that spot. You got to go back to that spot. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to go back to that spot. And if you're having challenge in that, then get a holy man, get a holy woman, get somebody who's bigger than you, who loves you, who's not competing with you, who's not trying to lord over you, who cares about you, who comforts you, who encourages you. Take them with you. Identify that spot. But you got to bring the cross in. Because miracles happen at the cross. When I was a little boy, I remember the song, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now, oh man.
man, I've got the joy of the Lord. Invite the cross in. Invite the cross in. Elijah cut a stick, threw it in the water. And then look what happened. Then the axe head floated. Tell me, tell me that's not a miracle. We've got an iron axe head that is now floating. Can you see it? It only happens when we invite the cross in. And the cross isn't just for those who don't know Jesus. It's not just for those who, who have had challenges and they say, that's why I came to church. That's why I tuned in. That's why I'm talking to this Christian and the cross of Jesus Christ, which fixes everything it's bought in. People receive salvation. The cross is not, it's not just for those who don't know Jesus. It's also for those of us where our axe head has gotten tossed, dull. We're not as sensitive to God as we used to be. We're not as sensitive to people as we used to be. We, our habits have changed. We've, we've gotten comfortable. And maybe because we've gotten sick. I, man, a few weeks ago, I ended up getting COVID back at the end of January. And man, that thing can jump on you. All of a sudden you feel like, ah, I don't want to call anybody. I don't want to go anywhere. It's not because of these overwhelming symptoms. There's just something that happened. Thank God that I have bigger people around me. And I can say, like those prophets said, will you come with me? Will you be with me? And it's not just from a COVID situation. Man, the challenge of losing someone, the challenge of having your finances go to a certain place, the, the challenge of division in your family, the, the challenge of maybe your dream not be fulfilled right now, and that disappointment starts to make your heart sing. The cross can fix that. I want you to know you are prime for a miracle. You are prime for a miracle. You're a prime for a person who is walking with God and open to God and enjoying a great season to be able to come alongside and say, hey, I'm good now. I was where you were, but God healed me to someone. And so my place is now too small. I got to make it bigger. So now I'm in your life. Let's believe God for a miracle. Let's, be, let's believe God for energy again and life again and joy again and hope again. Let's believe for that bring the cross and get back to that spot where it got dull and now let's watch that miracle take place. He says the iron, the iron axe head floated. And even when God's got you doing transformational things in your job in your community I speak to you son I speak directly to you, Robert. You are now a principal and you're leading men. You're leading children. You're leading teenagers. You! It's the Father who's called you, anointed you and appointed you. The sharper we are, the easier the anointing can flow through. See, it's not us that cuts the trees down. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes and removes the burdens. It's the anointing. I am so honored to be around you. I am so honored to be in the, just in the place where you have said yes to God. You have yet to see what the Father is going to do through these emerging leaders. And I speak this over Robert, but I also speak it over you. You're in places of leadership and influence. God wants to do some crazy things in your marriages, 
because it may look dark. Keep your ax head sharpened. Otherwise, you'll beat up against it. You'll beat up against it. You'll try and fix it. You'll do things. You'll even use principles and tactics and strategies that other people have used. And it just won't work. Because the edge is dull. Stay sharp and watch things happen with ease. Not because of you, but because of the anointing that's through you. The last thing that I'll share with you is the last verse. When that ax head floated to the surface. Grab it, <laughs> Elisha said. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it, son. Grab it, daughter. Grab it, brother. Grab it, sister. Grab it, mother. Grab it, father. Grab it. Why? It's floating. Pam and I go on vacation. One of my favorite times in vacation is to get on this thing called a, a lazy river. I got a lazy river, man. I didn't, I didn't grow up knowing about that lazy river. Man, I found that lazy river. And people want you to come and do this and come do that. Let's go on this excursion. Let's go. No, I just want to get on that lazy river. And I lay there on, on the float, man. And I'll close my eyes. And I would have started at the edge near the, you know, the front of our bungalow, wherever we're at. Next thing you know, man, I, <laughs> I open my eyes. I don't know where I'm at. Why? I'm floating. I'm moving. The miracle took place and that iron ax head, man, it came to the surface and then it started floating. And that's what happens when God shows up. He's there. He will do a miracle, but you got to grab it. You got to grab it. Jesus was walking on the water. He was walking on the water. He was moving. Peter said, hey, can I come and do what you're doing? Jesus is walking to the town, doing miracles. And there, there was this man who was blind, Barnabas. And he says, Jesus, Jesus, don't. Don't pass me by. You reached out. So it's important when God is moving, when he is doing the miracle, when light shows up and life shows up, reach out and grab. Reach out and receive it. Reach out and accept the miracle. Even the prophetic word. I spoke a word over Robert. That same word is available for you. I was talking with Michelle one day. Raise your hand, Michelle. I was talking with Michelle one day. She said there was a prophetic word that was going on in the house. And when it happened, it wasn't necessarily for me, but I said, I want that. Reach out and grab it. Reach out and, and grab it. There are things that are happening in our city. And God is visiting our city. But he's moving. He's moving. I want the Father God to transform Philadelphia. And as believers, man, we can't get stuck in the news. We can't just say, that's it. It's gun violence in the city. Things are happening in our city. This is what's going on in the nation and the world. No! Jesus, show up in Philadelphia. And I'm willing to cry out. We had leaders a few months, a month ago that cried all night long. Lord, show up in our city. Show up in our schools. Show up in our colleges. Show up in our homes. Show up in our businesses. Show up, Jesus. We may have been dull in the past, but we're getting healed. We're inviting the cross in. And we are expecting a miracle. How many of you are expecting a miracle? Stand to your feet. Are you expecting a miracle? Come on, stand up with energy. Stand up with purpose. Stand up. Stand up.
don't just stand up in your body, stand up in your heart. I'm ready to grab that exhale. I'm ready to launch onto that miracle. Doesn't matter where you are, if you're here or if you're online, things have happened. Things have happened. Go back to that place. Realize that God wants to expand you. If you're comfortable where you are, this, this may miss you. You only found out that he was a little dull when he started clearing out the trees. He started expanding. Take a chance. Start to look at others. But I guarantee you, whether it's your husband or your wife, your parents or your children, your friendships, or any of the spheres that you influence, it'll reveal where you are. Don't be ashamed. Take the right people with you. Let them encourage you. And let them bring a cross in. That'll be a sign of a miracle. And when the miracle takes place, and the miracle will take place, reach out, man. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Did he grab the ax head and take it home and put it on a mantle? Did he take the ax head and bury it in the ground? Did he take the ax head and go to everybody and say, look at what was done, look at what was done. No, he put it back on the arm and they finished transformation. Because at the end of the day, it is always about others, others. I'm so proud of this audience. Look at you showed up, you showed up. Those of you that have masks and those of you that, you're here. Some of you wanted to sit further away, you're here. And I bless you for that. And that's not to knock anyone who is home for different reasons. But I will not be embarrassed. I will not be ashamed to say to you, get around other believers. Don't let the enemy discourage you for those who have experienced it. Don't get comfortable if you've been tempted to. And if there have been any level of disappointment take place in your life, get healed so that your heart doesn't get infected, so that God can still use you and that dreams will be fulfilled, not just in you and not just in you. Because if it's you, the place is too small. We need to expand. Let's start cutting some trees down. Let's start cutting some trees down. Let's get our ax sharpened and cut some trees down. For the men that are here, I want you to influence every man you know, every teenage man, every young adult man, every older man, every unmarried and married man. Let's get bold. Let's influence. And let's fill this house and fill our city with men of God who can bring fatherhood back again, where visions can be seen and where dreams can be dreamt. Let's get busy. Sharp our exit for all of us. And let's cut some trees down. But remember, it's only by the Spirit of the Lord. Bow your heads. Father, thank you for moments like these that transform us. Thank you for helping us to see. We grab it, Lord. We grab it. Thank you, Father. I speak right now over every spirit of depression. Every individual that has been experiencing depression, I break it right now by the Spirit of God. And any who are free agree with that, that we might bring heaven's opinion here, that the spirit of depression may be broken. The spirit of fear might be broken. We move into every dark place right now and we release the grace of God and the light of God and the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Amen. Put your hands together and worship our great God.
Wow, what an amazing time we had. Thank you so much for joining um, and sharing as we sung praises to our God together and able to hear um, a message and a teaching that just fills us up, you know, to get us prepared and ready for the week. Um, so as you're going through this week, um, remember the words that you heard today. Um, be strengthened, be encouraged. Um, so thank you so much. Please subscribe, like, share on our YouTube and our Facebook page. Um, and we'll be happy and ready to see you next time. Thank you so much. God bless.